Vesuvius explodes. Italy's historic volcano bursts into the most fearsome and devastating eruption in 70 years. Over the fiery crater, a great pall of smoke and lava dust spirals into the sky. Pompeii has long been one of history's most haunting snapshots of sudden catastrophe. The ancient Roman city, buried under volcanic ash after Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, has fascinated the world for centuries. Visitors are drawn to the preserved streets, homes, and especially the plaster casts of victims frozen in their final moments. For generations, these figures were thought to tell us clear stories. Families huddled together, parents clutching children, neighbors caught in desperate embraces. Yet new research is rewriting what we thought we knew. Thanks to DNA evidence extracted from these remains, scientists have uncovered details that reveal surprising truths about who these people were and how they really died. The Eruption of Vesuvius and Preservation of Pompeii We know from where they were found that they had been hiding for hours and hours as the pumice and ash piled up. And really, to escape, they most likely had to go to the second story of a house, crawl out of a window, perhaps during that very lull when they thought the eruption was ending. On an August day in 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius roared to life with a force that changed history. The massive eruption blasted molten rock, pumice, and ash high into the sky, sending dark clouds over the bustling towns of Pompeii and Herculaneum. For hours, the people of Pompeii experienced earthquakes, falling debris, and darkness that turned day into night. Eventually, pyroclastic surges, searing flows of hot gas and ash, swept down the volcano, suffocating and burying thousands. Ancient accounts from Pliny the Younger, who observed the eruption from across the Bay of Naples, describe the horror of people fleeing the choking air and the eerie rain of ash that covered everything in sight. For centuries, Pompeii remained hidden beneath meters of volcanic debris. It wasn't rediscovered until the late 18th century, and since then, excavations have given us extraordinary windows into Roman life. Buildings, artwork, food, and even graffiti survived beneath the layers of ash. But the most chilling reminders of that day were the hollow cavities left behind by decomposed bodies. Archaeologists in the 19th century developed a technique of pouring plaster into these voids, creating lifelike casts that captured the final positions of Pompeii's victims. These casts became some of the most famous archaeological artifacts in the world, giving the impression of a city frozen in time at the moment of disaster. The casts were so realistic they were often interpreted as evidence of specific relationships. A figure crouching behind a child was assumed to be a mother, while two adults close to each other were assumed to be a married couple. Over the years, these interpretations became ingrained in the popular imagination, reinforcing the idea of Pompeii as a place where ordinary families perished together. But as modern science has shown, appearances can be deceiving. The House of the Golden Bracelet Case Study one of the most famous discoveries in Pompeii was a group of casts found in the House of the Golden Bracelet. This luxurious home, named for the ornate piece of jewelry found on one of the victims, contained the remains of four people who appeared to represent a typical Roman family. Archaeologists believe they were a father, a mother wearing the golden bracelet, and two young children. The arrangement of the bodies seemed to support this conclusion. One adult was holding a small child, a gesture that appeared unmistakably parental. For decades, this interpretation was repeated in books, museums, and documentaries, becoming one of the iconic family tragedies of Pompeii. However, when scientists recently extracted DNA from the skeletal remains within these plaster casts, the findings upend this long-standing belief. Researchers discovered that all four of the individuals were genetically male. None of them shared a close biological relationship, meaning they were not a nuclear family at all. The golden bracelet, once thought to belong to a mother, had in fact been worn by a male victim. Dr. Alyssa Mitnick of Harvard University, one of the study's authors, explained that the traditional interpretation was based solely on context. Since the individuals were found in the same house, close together, it was assumed they were related. But the genetic evidence tells a different story. These people may not have known each other before the eruption, and they certainly were not members of the same family. Her colleague, Dr. David Reich, emphasize that the findings challenge our assumptions not just about gender roles in Roman society, but also about how people behaved in moments of crisis. 
It's possible these men were strangers who came together in desperation, seeking shelter in the same place as chaos unfolded around them. Mitnick even suggested that in such terrifying moments, people may have embraced each other for comfort, regardless of whether they were family or not. The Science of Ancient DNA Analysis Extracting DNA from victims of Pompeii presented enormous challenges. The eruption destroyed most organic matter, and the plaster casting process further complicated recovery by filling in spaces around the bones. For decades, it was assumed that meaningful genetic material could not be preserved under such extreme conditions. But advances in ancient DNA analysis have changed the field of archaeology dramatically, allowing researchers to recover information from even the most unlikely sources. In the Pompeii study, scientists carefully drilled into bones encased in the casts to collect powder samples. From these, they were able to isolate fragments of DNA and sequence them using modern technology. Although the genetic material was degraded, enough was preserved to reconstruct details about the victim's biological sex, ancestry, and potential kinship ties. The process has been compared to assembling a shredded document from tiny scraps requiring painstaking work and sophisticated computational methods. The results were astonishing, not only for disproving long-held assumptions, but also for providing new insight into the demographics of Pompeii. For instance, DNA evidence revealed many of the city's inhabitants were descended from immigrants from the eastern Mediterranean. This finding reflects the cosmopolitan nature of the Roman Empire, where trade, conquest, and migration created diverse populations in cities far from Rome itself. Pompeii was not an isolated provincial town, but a thriving hub of cultural exchange, and its victims reflected that diversity. DNA analysis also opened the door to understanding health conditions that may have affected the population. In other studies, genetic traces of diseases like tuberculosis and malaria have been identified in ancient remains. While this particular Pompeii research focused primarily on identity and kinship, future studies could reveal even more about the health and lifestyles of the city's inhabitants before disaster struck. The Continuing Study of Pompeii Pompeii remains an active site of archaeological discovery, and new technologies continue to shed light on aspects of the city previously hidden. Excavations in recent years have uncovered entire neighborhoods, frescoes with vibrant colors, and even graffiti that gives voice to the people who once lived there. The discovery of a ceremonial chariot perfectly preserved near the city walls offered a glimpse into Roman ritual life. Meanwhile, careful restoration of plaster casts has allowed researchers to preserve them for a future study without damaging the fragile bones inside. The DNA research is just one part of a larger effort to use science to deepen our understanding of the ancient world. Techniques such as isotopic analysis can reveal where individuals grew up based on the chemical signatures in their teeth, while CT scans of plaster casts can show skeletal structures without breaking them open. It's clear that Pompeii still has much to teach us, even 2,000 years after its destruction. Each new discovery adds a layer of depth to the story, whether it's about the city's cosmopolitan population, its vibrant culture, or the tragic circumstances of its end. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think of the new DNA evidence from Pompeii? Let us know in the comment section below.